All right, Shalom to everyone. Thank you, Most High, for another day. Thank you, Most High, the, uh, for the Sabbath that just went past. Um, what I want to do in this particular video is going to uh, what you would call mind control. I've done this before, but um, I want to go into more depth in Scripture um, and based on you know certain experiences uh, that uh, I've been going through uh, in regards to uh, mind control. Now, before I go there, um, I want to just get into um, the new year. Uh, some people have their different beliefs on when it is. And I, I'm, I'm really glad that we're doing it, you know, close to the time that they used to do it in the Bible, our foreparents, um, based on the spring. Um, you know, the dead of winter should be a give me. You shouldn't you, you shouldn't be following New Year's January first because it's still hibernation time for the animals. Bears and things of that nature are still sleep. So, you know, for us to even understand, even if some people deal with it in April or you know other parts of March, and I'm I'm still proud of that. I'm I'm glad that we're you know getting our things together to understand that the New Year comes in during the spring time. And another thing I would like to say too, this video and well, this particular information that I'm about to get into is not to actually fight or debate with others that believe different. But I just want to uh, say this, that um, I am glad that we understand closely on the times and the Most High will bless us for that because we're trying. Okay. He said he's going to speak to his people through another tongue another language based on another you know like the English language or any other language that is not Hebrew okay so uh, with that said um, based on the way I understand it and I hope I get some comments and you can send me an email on this and I'll leave my email uh, on the description box of this particular video um, now what the world uh, calls the what you would say the vernal equinox that is Friday so-called Friday which is nothing but the worship of Frigga okay that's uh, that's another that's guessing like what you would say Greek mythology things of that nature is Frigga March 20th okay now that is actually bringing in the spring solstice they're just gearing you in for another worship of a falling angel but I don't want to go too far into that right now but based on the calculations that I can comprehend um, like I said there's others that believe that the the new year this year is this Gregorian Sabbath that just went past they believe that we're bringing in they would say this is considered a happy new year because this is Saturday sundown and this is Sunday so they believe that this is the actual day that is starting the new year and I don't agree with that but I am not arguing or debating because I'm glad anyway I'm just I mean I'm at peace to the point where I know that we're close so it's not to fight I just want to I want people to just look at this particular information real quick on what I'm about to get into now I know that you have the US Naval Observatory time that you can put in the coordinates for Jerusalem um, but some people are not understanding that it don't matter what part of the world you're in if it's equal night and day it's going to be equal night and day of any time a.m. or p.m. Um, at that particular time frame um, so based on timeanddate.com I know some people don't like timeanddate.com but I did research on timeanddate.com and the US observatory time um, they're pretty much the same um, in time frames uh, when it comes down to this particular 
information. Okay? Now, give me a minute here. I'm using two devices here. Uh, now, when I go to, okay, March the 14th, right? Now, sunrise March 14th, well, let's just say sunset, okay, was the, you go into the new day, um, evening in the morning is the first day, evening in the morning, second day, et cetera, et cetera. So, if you're on the 13th and the sun goes down 7.13 in this Eastern Standard Time, 7.13 p.m. So now you're going into the sunset at 7.13 p.m. and the sunrise on the 14th, 7.21 a.m. There's, it's not equal day and night or equal night and day. Um, at that particular time now on the 17th you have there's a closer time it's only a minute in between and then that particular sunset sunsets one minute more than it one minute more than it set the next day so that's why a lot of us believe that the actual new year on any time any any year you put in is going to always be closer to equal parts night and day on the 17th of this Gregorian calendar. See what people are doing is, and I said this about two years ago I believe, that it's going to eventually show up because one day you're going to have a, a, a Gregorian Saturday on like a 12th and it's not going to be, it's not going to mesh with the Enoch calendar. All right. Uh, so I've been studying this for about two years straight, off and on. And it's, I'm coming to the same results unless, you know, I do have a s issue with comprehension and I have to do things over and over. I have to read things over and over. So maybe I have a mental issue here that I'm not really comprehending it. And I can ac actually accept that. That's no, that's no point. But if someone can actually show me the logic or a different, um, you know, different perspective, like March 17th, okay, the 16th of March, the sun sets at 7.16 p.m. on this Eastern time here. Then, sunrise, it sets the 7, 7.17 but when you look at the a.m. side, 7.17 a.m., 7.17 p.m. So you get one more minute more of daylight. It's more closer opposed to the 14th, 13th and 14th. Okay? Because this is, you know, 15th is considered Sunday. And you it's not meshing together based on the book of Enoch when it goes into the luminaries in their in their uh, course it, it doesn't it doesn't mesh um, and like I said I want to be respectful I want to say this in a way that it's not condescending I just want people to really look at it I don't care if I'm right or wrong um, it's not about who, who's right or who's wrong that's I don't deal with you know I'm you know I don't deal with that I sometimes you know I see things and you know people don't I guess to the point where they get to the point where they know so much, they have so much knowledge that they can't look at what the little guys here and the little box square here are really, you know, really seeing it. I mean, sometimes you're going to see, then you're not going to be able to see things other people see. All right. So like I said, I want people to really pay attention to this. And I know there are, you know, there's a particular group and within their group, I know that there are people that are really looking at it. And they're not really probably saying anything because of the respect of their teachers. And I can trust me, I understand that. But I want the, what I want the teachers to do is really look into it, so they can just even the coordinates of Jerusalem. It still doesn't mesh on the 13th and the 14th. 13th sunset which is now you're in the 14th 
evening in the morning of this first day it's evening so we start with the evening so you look at the 13th Friday sundown then you look at the 14th Friday sundown you would say well yes that's a minute but it's always going to be a minute on the sunset side of any day so you can't use it that way you have to look at the 13th sundown sunset excuse me or sunrise excuse me let me get this right sunrise 7:23 a.m. right then you look at the 14th 7:21 a.m. there's no time frames in between where it match more close than the 17th and in this eastern standard time over here the 17th got it 7:17 a.m. to 7:17 p.m. equal <laughs> so they're not playing they be like well you know what you know hey I'm going to put it out there. But if you, you put in uh, Jerusalem, and let me just do that real quick, uh, it's going to be a minute difference. Uh, it looks like it's a misprint because once you do, when you look at all the other minutes, it's two minutes in between. But it looks like it jumps three minutes more on the sun side. So you all can do that. I'll put this in up here so you all can do it. I'll actually put up my um, coordinates. Oh, not even quarters. I have to do. I, I didn't have to go through all that, and I'll just put both links, timeanddate.com, uh, and I would like for someone that really understand the U.S. Observatory time to put in the coordinates. Show me how it's meshing closer together to the 14th of this Gregorian Saturday, because what people are doing is they're looking at the Gregorian Saturday, trying to correlate it with the Enoch seventh day and it's not going to do that because the moon changes her course she do what she want and based on the Enoch's calendar and I hope this is very clear it's a it's almost like it's considered really today you would say a solar calendar so it's a solar calendar it's not a it's not a lunar calendar so you can't really correlate the days to say which is New Year's more closely than you know if you're using this Gregorian calendar you're gonna throw yourself off and that's why when you look at certain other years like if you look at 2013 uh, you would notice that um, in some of the other calendars you would see that yes on some Saturdays do link in with the Enoch calendars Shabbat she's on sometimes and she's off Okay, so I don't want to get too far off that. Matter of fact, I just wanted to get into that real quick. I want people to really look into that. Uh, leave comments, uh, you know, and I want you all's opinions. And, you know, maybe you all can just show me something because the way I'm understanding it with the small comprehension I got when it comes down to math and things of that nature. I mean, like I said, I've been studying this off and on for two years now, and I can't see any different way that you, you know, and I think what it is to be comfortable. I'm, I'm, I think what people are doing is when they have their holy day set up on the Gregorian Sabbath, even though they may know in the back of the head that this may not be the Sabbath of the, the Enoch's calendar, you don't want it to fall on a moon day, things of the day. Some people say, well, you can't keep switching the days, but a, this the 17th, I, I believe, is a Tuesday or Monday of this year. March the 17th, I think, is... Uh, it's Tuesday. I'm not sure. Monday, one of those days. Uh, let me check real quick. All right. Let me check. Give me a minute. All right. Uh, oh, it's Tuesday. So you see that it's, of course, the 14th, 15th Saturday. That's 14 days. You see. So it is. You would say that it's meshing, going together with the with the Sabbaths. But what happens is you got to understand that they're two days off. February <laughs> so that Saturday really is not our seventh and that's what people are doing when they got 28 days you got 28 days in February there when you if you got you know calendar I know I'm going off I'm, I'm wanting to get into this lesson 30 days 30 days change of season 31 days okay usually you're gonna have 30 days in a month unless the month or I mean unless the season is about to change 
So what's going on in February, see, they do this stuff on purpose. They want to throw off the clock of the most high. Okay. That's why it says in Daniel, um, I believe in Daniel chapter nine, uh, Daniel chapter seven, they shall think to change times and laws. So, and that's what they're doing to throw off cause debates. And like I said, I just want people to really look at this information, pay attention to it. I mean, this is the course of the moon. You're going to get thrown off. All right. So based on the way Enoch is set up Tuesday, you you see that that is equal parts both night and day are equal sunrise and sunset are equal that day you can look that up you can put in time and date .com. uh there's a time and date dot com forward forward slash calendar well forward calendar forward that's the link that i have set up here right now but i'll actually just put the link up don't need to listen to what i just said who won't write that down and I'll, you can just click on the link and you'll see exactly what I'm saying. All right. So basically what I want people to do is to hit me up and ask, I mean, to say is what is closer to equal parts night and day this Saturday or the 17th, which, which is more closely correlated. And then hopefully if people are not too proud and, you know, not to the point where they say, well, you know what, I'm, I want to be right or whatever, you know, because people have that in their mind, like, okay, I've been teaching longer than you, who are you, this little guy come up here, you trying to teach me something, and that's the mind frame of, of a lot of our people, but, and I understand, so I, like I said, I don't want to cause a debate, um, uh, I'm not about that, uh, well, I try not to be about that, um, so, but like I said, I'm still glad though. You know what I'm saying? I'm still glad that we got it close. You see what I'm saying? I'm glad we we ain't messing with no January first no more. You see what I'm saying? It's better than that. Even if y'all was doing it in April, I'll still commend that. <laughs> For real. So we're, you know, it's way better than some some Saturday. I mean, some 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 uh some winter garbage dealing with these goons out here messing with the Babylonian customs. OK, now the lesson today, actually, that's almost one lesson by itself. 17 minutes is mind control. Now, the reason why I want to go here again is kind of like revise what I did a while back. I think about 2014, uh, you will see an avatar or a frame freeze of a brother that has red eyes in his face. You know, he's black. Uh, I did this a while, but I wanted to get into this again. Um, now, as people understand, I do talk about gang stalking, right? And I, I, I use that term for those that are not too much of our fold of Hebrews. Uh, we should learn how to be able to talk to different demographics of people so they can understand that we mean well if we believe in Christ and the other nations are included. All right. So. The first thing I want to say in this particular, starting this as an introduction of this particular video or lesson is mind manipulation. Now, this is considered, you know, fiction compared to some, you know, to some people. Um, but it's totally true when you do the research. Now, based on. How can I say this so I can I have to be careful on how I say this based on I'll say an organization that I'm that I know some information that I'm about to read in regards to mind control is 100% true there is no doubt in my mind I'm 120% sure that these things actually work and they can cause people to do certain things without them knowing subconsciously you you have a thought about just going to mcdonald's or somewhere oh you know let's, hmm, i want a big mac or something now of course subliminal messages through your these lcd screens things of that nature you know uh liquid crystal display because that's what 
LCD stands for, and a lot of people don't know that your eyes are are you know are almost like quartz crystal. So they know how to hone in on your on your alpha rhythms in your brain. Now, the big thing is is frequencies. Now, when you do the origin of the word frequency, it links to the word frequent. So it's something really that's uh, uh, you know frequent. All right. Now, when you look at the word frequent in the Hebrew is 1875, and it's darash. Okay, that's D A R A S H. A primitive root, properly to tread or frequent, usually to follow. Huh? Follow. Frequent. Follow. Now, see, remember I was talking about the gang stalking thing? Even when you deal with the, the book of Enoch, when the watchers, that's why they call them watchers. Because they was watching man, they had uh, access to go from the heavenly realm to the earth but they were bound Enoch goes into that they were bound and now there's there's 2,000 of them that you they all over the place so what you see here is the results the behavioral results of the falling angel seed some you know of course you got the Nephilim do you have the spirit of the of them which are demons or devils they're demons people are possessed by devils but now since Satan you know he wants to use man he's using technology to possess people oh trust what I'm telling you this is true you can use technology to possess people with demons sounds real crazy but just think about this for a few minutes Nobody right now that I know can dissect their cellular phone and show me how they can use it, how, how, how it works. But we understand the features and how to, we know how to use the features. But no one can dissect and say, you know, I don't know how, how is my voice going to somebody else. But so the reason why I'm saying it that way because if you believe certain technology you can't say that what I'm saying is, is false when I'm about to show information that can be confirmed okay that can be confirmed all right and, this, and it says Darash primitive root probably to tread or frequent usually to follow for pursuit or search frequent frequencies this is something that people are doing frequently searching looking for people they call it under the Stasi groups and you know you got this, this KKK thing going around in America dealing with stalking people but people are looking at the surface not understanding that there's an actual spirit involved there and that's why I want to go into this in more depth so people can understand that I know the blueprint based on scripture what they're dealing with and what a lot of us are seeing is demons people are possessed remember I, I, uh, I can't say remember there's nobody in here but me but there's a particular video that I did years ago that I said there's going to be more demon possessions based on the chemtrails nano that's nanotechnology you're dealing with blocking out the sun now there's a different frequency that people will behave under to tread as it says here this is very it's, it's not that hard to understand but it's hard to digest tread or frequent usually to follow by implication to seek or ask mm, where have you seen him where is he your phone ring for no reason I was telling the sister earlier that I mentioned CGI on a particular video then you know office wrong ring and there's a number calling my direct line saying CGI and then the person or whoever hung up before I was able to actually answer the phone so they're watching under another frequency dealing with high spiritual levels everything is electric electronically 
something is you you have electricity in your body the angels they are the same they're just on a higher frequency than we are that's what it is I'm telling you there's no other way you can understand this then it says pursuit or search by implication to seek or ask specifically to worship the angels are coming to the earth being worshipped by man then it says ask at all care for diligently inquire make yeah, then it says necromancy question search seek frequent that's in the word dorash that's how you say it in the Hebrew right now let's go to the word demon D-E-M-O-N Hebrew number oh now you got pop-ups everywhere huh Hebrew number 2916 demon teat that's the way you say it teat from an unused root meaning apparently to be sticky a demon through the idea of dirt through the idea of dirt now we all know that how Adam and Eve how we were created by dirt but what happened to that dirt it had to be raised the most high put his spirit in it the walk he breathed in the nostrils of man life but now since we are away from life now we are back to the dust that we come from even the snake himself the serpent he was cursed to the dust of the ground okay so when you see demon understand then it says dirt to be swept away mud or clay now this is the word in the Hebrew for demon mud or clay figuratively calamity clay dirt mire your death these things here know that they're going to be put back in the ground they're going to be put into dirt they're going to die that means death to be swept away so what they're trying to do is get as many as they can to follow suit many is the image of the most high see we're in the image of the most high and they don't like that okay Now, that could be a mouthful to a lot of people, right? Now, I want to show mind control in scripture. How the mind is very, very how intelligent the Most High is when he created man. All right, now let's go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 1. All right, Deuteronomy 30 and 1. And it says, And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, that the blessings and the curses which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee. So the cursings and the blessings, we eventually, we're going to understand the curses and the blessings. Now, Based on this particular scripture, this is talking about the children of Israel scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Okay? You're talking about the minority groups. These are the children of Israel. These are the ones that have been the elect since creation. Since Deuteronomy 7 and 6, the Most High chose of seed above all seeds, a people above every nation. Now, this is not the boast, but I have to bring that out. Because we got to understand if these people can be under a mind control, which a lot of them don't know that they are. A lot of them. I mean, I can remember certain things in, you know, you know, in the cities, you know, you'll go, you, you, you'll talk to and I've talked to a homeless brother before. And I asked him, I was like, man, you know, have you ever tried to, you know, get your job or whatever? And oh, it's not all about jobs and it's not about now. I'm not saying that that's everything. But he seemed like he was under a certain control beyond his comprehension. And he always do this mainly to the poor of the earth. Now, like I said, it's not always something to look at to frown upon if you're, if you're poor. 
because I ain't doing all that myself. So there's a, even Christ himself, he was considered homeless. He didn't have much. But if the, if, if there's entities that can keep you under mind control, you best believe they're going to do this on a mass level to minority groups. So they beta test us. Now what they do is they spread their vial throughout the whole world. And a, a lot of people are under mind control and don't know it. All right. Let's go to Proverbs 21 verse 27. And it says, the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination. How much more when he bringeth it with a wicked mind? He's going to bring it in with a wicked mind. Now, to be wicked in mind, there's, there's a frequency that you have to be tuned to to be evil-minded. Just like an antenna on a, on, a, in a, on a radio. You turn it certain ways, you pick up a signal. You turn it another way, you pick up another signal. In between, it just pick up a static. Okay? All of us are tuned a certain way. That's why they're coming up with science talking about they're looking for the God gene, the, the genetic trace of the most high. That's what they're doing. They understand that there is a genetic code that a lot of people are tuned towards the most high because he understood, they understand scripture. All right. Let's go to uh, Isaiah 26, verse 3. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. And it says, Thou will keep him in a perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. You see what it says, mind is stayed on thee? Thou will keep him in a perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. So if you keep your level of mind, your mind, your brain, your signals, your frequencies towards the most high, there's no way that they can interrupt the signal because the most high will protect you. That's why it says a perfect peace. So whatever happened to you, it won't matter in this world. Oh, okay. You, you're going to kill me? Matthew chapter 10. Don't worry about what they can do to the body. You okay? But worry about the one that can kill both body and soul to hell. So we don't have to worry about what a man can do to it. That's why Christ, he knew what was going on. Now, of course, this flesh will rise, or you know, say, you know, Father, please take this cup away from me. That's his flesh talking. That's that's just natural fear. You're gonna have it when it's time. Yes, you're gonna have a certain level of fear. But he kept going. He kept doing it. You see what I'm saying? He 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 fasted and prayed. So that's another thing. If you keep your mind stayed on the Most High, I don't care what these people are doing. I don't care what you call it. Cointel Pro and all those different government terms and all that. They can't do jack to you. Okay, because we are jacked into the real world and not the matrix because you're keeping your mind staying on thee. That's why it says thou shall keep him in a perfect peace. Thou, the most high, don't have. He's not going to break his own commandments. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter three, verse 16. Jeremiah chapter three, verse 16. And the reason why I'm showing you is because most. Most people don't deal with scripture in the correct manner their faith is weak we like it's to the point where it's not where it should be to understand supernatural power if people understand that they got electric uh you know they can send electric electronic harassment to your house and make your heart palpitate and give you a brain pain in your head and all this stuff they can send free signals to your house and all that through your body microwave signals and all that if they believe that, they got to understand that there's a higher power than that which is existed to war against your flesh. All right. Jeremiah 3.16 says, And it shall come to pass when ye be multiplied and increased in the land. In those days, saith the Lord, they shall say no more the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Neither shall it come to mind. Neither shall they remember it. Neither shall they visit it. Neither shall that be done anymore so we understand here that there's going to be a time that our people will not deal with the law it's going to they're going to say neither shall we, we say that now uh in those days said the lord they shall say no more the ark of the covenant of the lord what people say the law is done away with 
The people of the book say that now. Okay? The so-called black Americans, right? The Jamaicans, the Haitians. All right? The people of the book, the Guatemalans. Okay, the 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 darker hue of the Neglitos, the Philippines. The darker in hue of the the Mexicans, the Spanish. All of us deal with everything else except the law. They deal with everything else. And I was looking at something, a, a, a documentary, when I seen these real dark Mexicans messing around with some bull, dancing and all that. The Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to mind. See that? even It's not going to even come to mind to some of our people. All right? Now, how to stop some of these to, how to stop them from breaking your thoughts I thought I would just go into a few scriptures on that because that's what they're doing they're actually going into your mind interrupting signals because your brain is uh, you, know, you know they you got different terms you know you got certain terms like your cerebral your cerebral uh, capacity they know how to interrupt certain things in the brain, in the brain all right let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 22 verse 30. Seven, Matthew 22 verse 37 and it says Yeshua said unto him thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind with all thy soul and with all thy mind there's leaks there a lot of people not dealing with the scriptures or dealing with yes the scriptures with all their mind now, how do you love the Lord? I'll show that. Okay, this is how you love the Lord. First John. Five, verse three. I'm going to start at the first verse. First John chapter 5 verse 1. It says, Whosoever believeth that Yeshua is Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him that begot loveth him also that is begotten of him. So there's no respect of person when it comes down to the Most High. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. So we understand what love with all thy soul is. For this is the love of God. So now the Bible is going to tell you what it is. That we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. Which means it's not hard as you think. And if you die in this world when you're trying to keep the commandments, there's no grief because there's no mourning. Because you're not going to be dealing with this world. You're going to be reserved in the new heaven for the new heaven and the new earth. All right. Um, so when you see Matthew 23 verse 37 Christ said unto him thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart love we understand is keep the commandments with as much of you as much as you can understand with your mind because when you look at the word heart the heart represents the mind when it comes down to spirituality and with all thy soul and with all thy mind that's why it's saying it that way let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10 excuse me 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10 and it says now I beseech you brethren by the name of our Lord Yeshua that ye shall speak the same thing that's another thing this, see the thing is the reason why they can pull this on a lot of people this mind control because they understand these scriptures these people that's that smart to make these devices to control people's minds oh, you best believe they weren't is because people are not on one accord based on scripture. Now, like I said, you're not going to remember everything. You're not going to know everything. But if you can keep one mind frame on what is the truth and what is not, everything else will come together. All right. Now, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment which means the same laws 
Okay, the same laws. It means everybody should know that they're supposed to follow the Ten Commandments. Now, is there are certain times where you deal with the holy days and all that? Yes, the Most High will deal with us, or He will eventually. That's where grace comes in, because everybody not going to do it at the same time. Okay, and this actually goes into certain futile debates on what is this and who is that. We're not to get into debates or arguments. This goes for me and anybody else. Okay, so let's go to First Corinthians chapter two, verse sixteen. First Corinthians two and sixteen says, "For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him?" The mind. It's always talk. See, the Most High deal with the mind because he understands that that's the first thing Satan is going to attack. Okay, instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. So if you have the mind of Christ, that there's no way that they can interrupt your signals for you to be dealing with another frequency. Frequent. You're dealing with now falling spirits, demons. All right? That's what you're dealing with if you're not dealing with Christ. All right, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and 4. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 4 says, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds. And you know that's a lowercase God, so it's, you know it's talking about Satan himself. Right, of this world blinded the minds of them which believe not, so he's going to blind them. But how is he going to do it today? And I'm about to show you how he's doing it in a few minutes. But I want to show you these scriptures on this is written in scripture. But now, what we're looking at is actually actual technology. Is he's prepped devices, he made these freaking devices that he can cause people to be under mind control. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God. He is the image of the Most High. He is not God, but he's in the image of the Most High. Should shine unto them. Okay? Now, on the surface level, what they're doing is blocking the sunlight. Because they know physically you're low, it's going to lower your vibration. Under these these chemtrails so what happens is the those things are made of barium and aluminum aluminum excuse me and astronium certain metals and it's uh, considered like a nanotechnology that actually gets into your pores and cause you to react a certain way when you get a bunch of aluminum and then certain auto you know uh you know certain things that don't supposed to be in the in the body you act a certain way all right Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 12. For if there be first a willing mind. So the first thing, be willing to try to live as holy as possible. Of course, you're not going to get everything correct. But when you, if you uh, go to Matthew 22, 37 again, when it says, God with, I mean, when it says, Yeshua said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. That means you're putting all your effort into living holy. When you do that, there's no way they can deal with you. Because you're going to be in the book so much, tuned into the book, that they won't be able to switch and mess around with your algorithms. And that's what they're doing to people. Second Corinthians 8 and 12. For if there be a, excuse me, for if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath and not according to that he hath not. So it's not according to what you uh, what you don't have. Like if you don't have all the knowledge, like I said before, then the most high, we're still under grace. Okay. I mean, our generation and everybody have fallen so far that the most high is not going to judge you on things that you don't know. So when it says, for if there be a excuse me, for if there be first a willing mind, that's what he's looking for. It is accepted according to that a man hath. So it's accepted. So if you have certain knowledge, yes. You understand it, you can comprehend it, yes. And not according to that he had not. So it's not according to what you don't know or what, what you don't have, okay? All right, so let's go to Second Corinthians 11, verse 3. Now, I know sometimes Paul's writings can be hard to understand, but hopefully this is making sense. Second Corinthians 11, verse 3. This is, but I fear lest 
by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve. Okay, now he, to that particular time, he went directly to him. He's speaking. That's under vibration too. When you, with, with, what you say out of your mouth. But remember that the most high. See, a lot of people don't know how powerful the tongue is, I think. The most high said, let there be light. There was light. That's how he spoke that. Christ said, storm, be still. He spoke that. The storm was still. See, what he was teaching the whole time was... You have authority out of your mouth. Whatever your ears hear, it brings forth actions and reactions. Okay? But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguile Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupt from the simplicity that is in Christ. So what he's saying is a lot of our people, a lot of people in this generation of time, will be beguiled but again they're doing it first they set up religions alcohol drugs in the neighborhoods things of that nature they set up certain things subliminal messages and screens and, and that's that's kind of like the new thing they're doing certain things under this blue screen dealing with liquid crystal display LCD screens and HD TV and all that that's how they doing it his agenda always and people have to be very careful is to kill mankind off but he's looking for the head which is the elect the Hebrew people if he can kill them off then he know that everything else is going to fall because of these people alright so that's why a lot of you are being targeted individuals and don't know, but they understand that there's something about you that's throwing off signals. They know. And that's why I want people to really pay attention to this actual lesson. And it says, but I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve, she was tricked. But the serpent spoke, though. Eve, through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupt from the simplicity that is in Christ so if you believe in Christ again you won't have issues when you believe in him with all thy soul and with all thy heart let's go to Ephesians chapter 4 verse 17 Ephesians 4 and 17 it says this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind see vanity links to being boastful Vain. You are always at, at the front, and when you believe in the vanity of the Gentiles, they put up materialistic things as their frontlets, as with whatever they can get from Earth or materialistic things. They believe that they are the ones that should be up as the top players. Okay. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles. Walk in the vanity as they walk in the vanity of their mind. See, when you can corrupt the person's mind, then Satan got you. Okay? So let's go to verse 18. It says, Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lavishness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not to learn Christ. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as a truth in Yesha, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. So the reason why I'm reading these is because a lot of people don't deal with different conversations we deal with the old man so again what I'm about to read here I want to show how this is actually a way and a portal that Satan can actually can actually hone into your signals of your brain verse 23 and be renewed in the spirit of your mind so you says the mind there to be renewed in the mind because again they can they can attack your brain 
to cause you to do certain things and you'd be wondering, oh man, I shouldn't have did this, I shouldn't have did that. But they can use it under nanotechnology or any kind of, any type of, uh, a lot of electronic devices today are linked to using your brain as you would say, you consider yourself a majority candidate, okay? Let's go to verse 24 and it says, and that ye put on the new man, which is after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speaking every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and sin not. So the most I saying, you can be angry at certain things that's going on, but don't sin because then you are falling to the same mess. So you have to be humble, but sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. So don't go, you know, dealing with being angry at something and then you go on to sleep see that's how they get people too under this electronic harassment you turn a certain way then it goes away and all that so this links into technology today and I'm going to show you certain this document that I have to confirm let's go to verse 27 neither give place to the devil don't give him any place don't give him any room any doorway to attack you okay because the only way he can attack you first is through the mind no person can do anything without the mind. <laughs> okay. Give me a minute here. All right. So let's go to verse twenty-eight. Let him that this is let him that stole steal no more. So that's why now, once the devil can he have any place here, now what Paul is doing is he's going to to certain things that most people do, and you're thinking, oh, I shouldn't have did it, but yet, but you're being under some type of control. Frequencies. Remember, we just looked at that frequencies or frequent links to people that's dealing with watching uh follow so that if they do they got the satellites there that can follow you around so what i'm doing is i'm showing you how modern time is using satan is using this modern time and the, and, and technology to hone in on your brain believe that all right and that's why it says uh verse 28 let him that stole steal no more but rather let him labor working with his hands the things which is good that he may have to give to him that need it verse 29 let not excuse me let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth no corruption at all what Paul is doing is he's gearing man to fight a battle to be like Christ because if he's not that's how most people won't make it because they're dealing with carnal all right of your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers verse 30 and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice all right otherwise so it's all malice verse 32 and be ye kind one to another now that's another thing now see of course this is surface understanding but if you take these small precautionary verses here that show you that if you just do the, the, the simple things certain things uh, you won't be leading yourself to something else that's why it says and be ye kind one to another tender hearted forgiving uh, one another even as God Christ's sake have forgiven you so the, for the sake of Christ the Most High sent his son here so we can have another chance and a lot of people take advantage of that thinking they can do whatever they want not knowing that they're under a spirit they're under a certain orchestrated spirit of Satan for them to believe that I'll show you I'm, I'm, I just I just have to go through these scriptures first and this lesson may be pretty long alright Philippians 2 verse 2 alright Philippians 2 and 2 fulfill ye my joy that ye be like minded like minded like the most high having the same love being of one accord of one mind one mind it's always telling you see the scriptures are always gearing people to be of one mind right let the mind excuse me let this mind uh, let's go to verse 5 let this mind be in you which was also in Christ the same spirit that was in Christ should be in you so what they gonna do? That's why I keep telling people they they mess up with the wrong people. They mess up with the wrong. It's like people say, "Oh man, you gonna do something to them?" No, I'm not gonna do anything. The Most High will fight our battles. 
All right. We don't have to do anything. Ephesians 6 goes into that. Okay. Let's go to Colossians chapter 1 verse 21. Colossians 1 verse 21. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind. Enemies in your mind. Enemies linked to demons in your mind. Think thoughts and coming all the devils trying to attack your mind. Enemies in your mind by wicked works. Any work that a man do that's wicked is orchestrated by a spirit. Period. That's why when you look up, as we just did, demon, it links to dirt. That's why when he told Cain, if you do well, you know, if you do, you know, if, if you don't do well, then sin is lieth there at the door. Sin, he lieth at the door. Okay. Let me get that real quick. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's go to Genesis. Genesis, um, give me a minute here. So you have sin in you, which is a connection to, to Satan. Okay. It's a, it's a connection to Satan. Not saying that you're evil because you're not doing it. If you're not doing anything, of course, you're not evil. But there's a wickedness inside of every one of us that links into the dirt that we have been cursed back to. So when you look at demon again, it says, let me get it real quick. I got so much stuff in my mind. Demon through the idea of dirt to be swept away. So that's what happens to man. All right. Give me a minute. All right. So it says, um. Verse 6 of Genesis chapter 4, verse 6. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? So he was angry. And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. When you see him and his desire, he's going to rule over you. Sin lieth at the door. Breaking the commandment, he broke the command. He didn't give the firstlings of his uh, of his fruits, firstlings of his his sacrifice to the Most High. Abel gave the firstlings. Okay, so that's the reason why sin was able to throw off his brain, his heart of man. The heart of man is the mind, right? And where was I? Give me a minute here. Yeah, let's go to uh, Colossians 1 verse 21 again. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind. Sometimes. See, that means that all of us, but some of us that's going to come away from that is going to follow the most high 100% or to the best of our abilities. In your mind, by wicked works. By wicked works. That's why it says enemies in your mind. Like again, I'm going to read something in, in a few minutes. Just bear with me. Based on this mind thing. Because people say mind control. Why do you think Satan is trying to attack the mind? There's a reason why. And we read all these scriptures with the word mind in it. To show you that there's a connection. And he is trying to throw off that connection from the Most High. By wicked works, yet now have he reconciled. So you're recon he's reconsidering letting you into his kingdom but you have to do something and that is believe in Christ and keep the testimony keep, keep, believe in Christ and keep the commandments alright alright so there's more information but I, I don't like some people say oh keep going man uh, let's go to James chapter 4 James chapter 4 verse 8 draw nigh to God I'm going to show you how big that is take your antenna move it around till you can get the right signal okay that's what it's saying draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you there's a connection you see the connection there take your brain put it in a book get drawn to this signal <laughs> okay and I'm using that term because I, I know that that's the way they they're trying to do it under their under their science and under their technology draw an eye to God and he will draw an eye to you cleanse your hands okay ye sinners which means get baptized 
which means stop dealing with doing dirt. Stop being a sinner. That's what people say, man, I got clean, I can wash my hands off, but I ain't messing with that. You got dirty hands, you know, a person that still kill, destroy. Ye sinners, and purify your hearts. Ye double-minded. The reason why I say it's double-minded is because people think that they can still commit sin and get into this word and be holy. You're double-minded. That's why it talks about the church in Revelations chapter 14, uh, chapter 4, verse 14. Chapter 3, verse 14 in that area about the, the, Leo, the Laodicean church. You're neither hot or cold, you're lukewarm. Let me read it. Let's go to Revelations. Uh, yeah. Revelation chapter 3, verse 14, it says, and unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. So, you, you, Which means is, you're, you're not for me, and you are for me. You're, either, you're, you're in the middle. I would thou were cold or hot. So the most I said, I wish you were either with me or you wasn't. So then, because thou art lukewarm, so you want to be in the middle, like double-minded, in the middle, I will spoo thee out of my mouth. So that's what the Most High is going to do. He's going to spit you out like you're making him sick, period. So, in regards to being double-minded, that's what you have to understand in James 4, verse 8. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your heart, ye double-minded. So he's actually talking to those of us that believe that we can do whatever we want. And still, oh yeah, you know, God gonna bless me. But yet, you're not putting in any effort to really respect the brother, but respect the Most High and His Son to put any real effort in. You're, you're just, you're, you're just cushioning yourself off of the, the grace you see what I'm saying? You're, you're just like someone that just want to partake in the blessings and not in, and put it and not put in the work. All right, let's go to First Peter chapter one verse thirteen. First Peter one verse thirteen. Wherefore gird up the loins of your mind. You see, it says gird up your loins like you got to go to war because that's what it is. Okay, eating pork, shrimp, lobster, crab was a war for me. Trust that. Especially pork bacon. You telling me to eat some turkey bacon? No, that's a war for me. That's just small stuff. We ain't, we don't even have to get on a cross. Now just think about that. Shrimp, lump crab. I used to kill lump crab, and it used to kill my brain because I used to get a headache. But then I can't know. I'll drink some water and a little bit of wine, and you know now I'm 194 pounds. If you look at some of my old videos, I was losing that weight. Because I was coming away from a lot of stuff. But since you see here, give me a minute here, make sure this thing working. It says, Wherefore gird up the loins of your mind. Now that's tough. This is a war. So what Satan is going to do, he's going to put in place a, a system under technology now, because he knows people are so addicted and connected to technology. He put in subliminal, de subliminal devices here and there to throw off your signals in your mind. I'll show you. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Christ. And what is this revelation? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you this in a few minutes. All right. Um, some people, let me just do this too. Some people deal with the word sober, like, okay, you can't drink. Not understanding what sober means in scripture based on this particular scripture in its context. So what I want to show in the Greek, since we're in the New Testament, the context of scripture for the word sober. And it's Greek number 4993. Okay. And it's sophrofino. It's sophrofino. It's S-O-P-H-R-O-N-E-O. And it's to be of sound mind. 
All right. Sound mind means spiritually minded. Okay. Figuratively moderate. Be in right mind. Now, some people say you ain't in your right mind because you're drunk. Okay, that's Zofo. That's another term. But this is for the mind. Soberly, temperate. It's actually talking about being humble, being like Christ. You, there's nothing wrong with having a little bit of wine. Okay, for the belly. That's in scripture, but I'm not going to even go that route in this video. All right. What I want to do is give some scriptures of the mind of the enemy. Okay. The mind of the enemy itself. So you'll understand on what I'm about to show you in these doctrines. All right. Revelation chapter 17, verse 9. And here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Now, verse 13. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast, unto Satan. They have one mind, just like they had one mind to come against the most high at the Tower of Babel. So these people sit in clergy, these people sit in little meetings. They come to one agreement to mass murder the whole earth. Oh, yes. It is not a coincidence that you got more, more people coming down with cancer, more people coming down with this disease, that disease, and all this mess under your vaccine vaccination program, because that's what I call it, under your depopulation program, under Rex 84, NADS, uh, Agenda 21, because immigrants, or what you would say the Spanish, are what you would say they're the ones that they're going after as well. So it's not a coincidence you got more biological, bio-warfare under chemicals killing people. People teeth decaying for no reason. But yet you got a dead corpse that got a full set of teeth. That don't make sense. Everybody going bald and all that because they got certain things that they mess up your pineal gland. Okay, some people balk on that. So it's a, it's, a, it's a war. You're using technology, chemicals, and, and and spiritual when it comes down to like if you have a dream or something, you 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 feel like you're off because they can hone in on your on your brain. Isn't this is real? All right, let's go to Daniel chapter seven verse twenty five, and this is what I was uh, saying before. Daniel 7 verse 25 and he shall speak great words against the most high and shall wear out the saints of the most high now earlier I was talking to a person uh, in regards to the calendar and this links to uh, in regards to the calendar that's why we have to figure things out they got New Year's in January 1st knowing that that's not New Year's at all because everything is still sleep. The grass and everything is still dead. The trees don't have no leaves on it. So how can that be New Year? So he shall, and this is what the beast is doing. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Wear out the elect. You know why? When you look at the word wear, it is actually weary to your mind. It's wearing you out. You got to go into all this literature to figure this out. It's, we're wore out. Okay, wear out the saints of the Most High, which is the elect of his servants. That's that's in Matthew chapter 24. All right. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. He chose the people above all. These people will, of course, teach the gospel to every other nation. But this is the saints. It's actually talking about the elect. And think to change times and laws. That's why it says think to change. They're thinking to change the times and laws. This is in scripture. So, you know, this is a prophetic thing that we need to watch out for in the latter days so we're here we're in the latter days let's go back to, to these book to this to this bible here and find out what they've changed or thought to change they changed new year's and new year's is not no january 1st they're thinking to change times and laws how did they change the law under a constitution of under some other some person even though i understand that it links to how the Indian chiefs wrote the Constitution, but they extrapolated the information out of the the Torah. And you got other governing bodies dealing with their their law, but it don't mesh well with the Ten Commandments and the way you're supposed to do things. So that's how they did it. And they shall be given unto 
his hand until a time and a time and the dividing of times. All right. Let's go to uh, Proverbs 23, verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart. Now, Satan knows this blueprint here. So whatever you think in your heart, and it, when it says think in his heart, that means what think thinketh in the old Quakers English means whatever you do, you had to had to be processed under your mind first, under your imagine imagination first for you to do it. Okay? For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Whatever you imagine and you start putting things down and actually going about it, that's how you that's what you are. Whatever you think, that's what you're gonna do. Eat and drink said to thee, but his heart is not with thee. So that means you're going to be talking to certain people that you that may be like a Judas's carry on. Nothing but a serpent. But it says eat with them. Because what's gonna happen is and I always tell people this, when they try to come against you, they're going to kill themselves. What Judas is carry out do? See, I know the book. See, I understand the cycle of this world based on scripture. The scripture put things in perspective. So a lot of people say, you know what? I don't want to talk to somebody because they may be against me or they may be, they may be a watcher. As the world under this covert attack, they call it perps or perpetrated, right? But they're nothing but demons. They got a spirit on them. But what happens is, Okay, they want to be with us? Cool. No problem. They want to hang around me? No problem. I guarantee you this. I'm going to read this scripture again. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee. But his heart is not with thee. That's okay. They can be with you. We know what Christ went through. Okay? And we know what Judas Iscariot did. The man killed himself, and that's all he's gonna do because they they're soulless. Any person that go around trying to harm another person that looking and lurking and all that, they're soulless. They gonna die anyway, no matter, unless they change. Hopefully, through the Most High's grace, they do. Okay. Now, I want to go through some uh, some documents here called Mind Control. I've done this before, but I wanted to link it in with Scripture on a, on a on a higher level. Okay, so we understand that. They can do this, and it's true because they can understand. You gotta understand. You're talking about Satan himself. He's a he. He's very advanced. Okay, he was right there beside the Most High. If he fell here on the earth, okay, if he's dealing with man and he had demons, they understand how to hone into your brain. What they do is they give man the technology to do it on a surface to throw you off, and people don't know that. So you have to look at how they're doing it. How can a mind, how can a, a device control a person's mind based on the technology that was given from Satan himself through his angels, like Isaiah and all these Simjaza. That's another name for Satan when you look at the book, when you read the book of the Enoch. Okay. But this would have to, I would have to do a part two on that, all right, to, to get in more depth. All right. So I actually am trying to squeeze about three hours worth of information into one particular hour and you know 13 minute video all right so let's go to uh some information here all right nervous system manipulation by m fields from monitors nervous system manipulation by em from monitors now I, I, do y'all understand the title and you can do this yourself and that's why i'm putting it up here this is abstract physiological effects have been observed in a human subject and they're calling you a test subject that's what it is human subject don't think this ain't real okay they beta test people for years new orleans was beta test when uh katrina hit over there that hurricane they put everybody they they confiscated all the guns and everybody in that area was under martial law so that was a beta test so don't think this ain't don't work okay in a human subject in response to simulation of the skin with weak electromagnetic fields that are pulsed with certain frequencies frequencies certain frequencies 
I'm going to get it again. I want this to sink in. Frequent. To tread or frequent, usually to follow, pursuit, or search. So they're searching out people's DNA. They're searching out people's brain waves. Is it sinking in? I hope it is. By implication to seek. Or specifically to worship. And we understand. Now think about this. Why would the word frequent in the Hebrew link to worship? What? The Anunnaki. That's what they call them. But the Bible in, in, in Numbers chapter 13 calls them the Anakim. These hybrid beings have been worshipped. They have the technology to throw off your frequencies in your brain. Frequency or frequent links to spiritual intervention of some sort. Okay? Frequencies near half hertz or 2.5. 400, whatever about your math. I don't care about all that. Then it says, such as to excite a sensory renaissance. Many computer monitors and TV tubes, when displaying pulse images, emit pulse electromagnetic fields of sufficient amplitude to cause such excitation. Excuse me. It is therefore possible to manipulate the nervous system. It is possible. To manipulate the nervous system of a subject by pulsing images displaying on a nearby computer monitor or TV set. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, don't believe this is fake. It's not. It's nowhere near fake like I did. Trust me, I did the research for years. It is true. Now, I don't want to read all through this garbage, uh, but there's another one. Now, this is what Satan do too. He'll throw an image out there. You know, the spirits can go through portals. They, you know, people be saying they be seeing a demon and people been touching them and all that. You feel touches by this pulse and by that. Yes, because they know how to use technology, but it's still based on frequencies. And I wanted to show how frequency links to worship. Okay. Method and apparatus for treating auditory hallucinations. Auditory hallucinations. All the toy. Oh, I heard something. Because they got your mind. They know. They understand what you're dealing with. They know that they can deal with you. That's why everybody don't ha have certain things. Everything is tailored to certain people. Because they find out what you're weak in. Okay. That's why it says. Uh, okay. Then it says stimulating one or more. That's a big word here. I don't even. I need an extra tongue to say this word here. Give me a minute. Stimulating one or more vesti. I guess I'll put it up so you all can see this silly word here. It's a pretty dull, but. Vestibulocular nerves or cochlea or cochlea regions will treat, prevent, and control auditory hallucinations. Okay, so they come with all these these big, long, tongue-twisting words just to make you believe, you know, oh, it's just science. Nah, this is spirit. Okay, there's another one I want to get into. Now, this, this document is pretty big, and if anybody wants it, uh, just let me know. Okay, there's another part here. It says, modifying, including a graphical electronic navigator operable by the individual to control the micropressor for assessing different parts of the system All right let's go to com communication system and method including brain brain waves analyst brain waves method including brain waves so if they know where your brain waves are don't you think they can manipulate you if you're weak-minded that's why I wrote that's why I went through those scriptures first. So we understand that there is a solution if they're trying to do all this electronic mess. Okay? Communication communication system and method including brain waves. Um let me see if I can read some of this junk. It says abstract a system and method for enabling human beings to communicate by way of their monitored brain activity. The brain activity of an individual is monitored and transmitted to remote location, remote location, remote location. 
Then it says by satellite. Oh, it's fake. This is, but yeah, we getting TV and everything else, cell phones through satellite. You don't think they can hone in in your brain? How many people? How, how many of you all know how to make a, a record player? No, thank you. Show me. This is true. Okay, we only understand the other technology. So yes, this is true. The brain activity of an individual is monitored and transmitted to a remote location. At the remote location, the monitored brain activity is compared with a pre-recorded normalized brain activity curves, where excuse me, waveforms or patterns to determine if a match or substantial match is found. If such a match is found, then the computer at the remote location determines that the individual was attempting to communicate the word, phrase, or thought, or thought. Google Glasses, they've already came out with this technology. That's how I know it's true. Corresponding, this is phrase or thought corresponding to the matched stored normalized signal. Signals, frequencies. Let me see if I, I didn't highlight, I highlighted the main ones I wanted to go to. Let's go to apparatus for electric stimulation of auditory nerves of a human being. Come on, man. Abstract, this is apparatus for electronic stimulation and diagnostic of auditory nerves of a human being. Auditory nerves, yeah, your ears. You hear some ringing noise and you'd be wondering, what is that? And then you can't remember what you was about to do. Come on, man. For determination of sens sensation levels, most comfortable levels. So it's comfortable. You ain't understanding, but, you know, it's comfortable. They don't want you to really hear it. But some of us, our, our ears are keen to the point where you're going to hear anything. It's just something ain't right. You're going to go outside. You What is up with the smell? I mean... You shouldn't go outside and it's cloudy and it smells like metal. Come on, man. Include a stimulator detachable secured to a human being for sending a signal into a human ear. Then it says an, an electrode placed within the human ear and electrically connected to the stimulator by an electric conductor for conducting the signals from the stimulator in the ear. A control unit is connected to the stimulator for instructing the stimulator as to characteristics of the generated signals being transmitted to the ear. Transmission. It's transmitting from frequency. It's all linked to demons. That's how they're doing it now. Anytime you hear transmission, uh, by satellite or anything of that nature, you gotta you gotta understand that that links to the watchers, the ones, the falling angels that fell. Matter of fact, I'll show you. I'll just go to Jude. Real quick, and this is the last scripture. Uh, Jude. Um, Jude one verse thirteen. And it says, "Raging waves of the sea." Foaming out their own, forming, foaming, excuse me, out their own shame, wandering stars, wandering star. What is a wandering star? The falling star? Yeah, but I'm going to show you what it is. Wandering stars to whom to reserve the blackness of darkness forever. Verse 14. And Enoch, also the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints. To execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have excuse me, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust, and their mouth speak of great swellings, words having men's persons in admiration because of that advantage so what it's saying is you can look this up in the book of Enoch when it talks about the the watchers like I said I, I didn't want to go this far but I may do a part two of how 
you can know the origin of where a lot of your technology started okay and how they're using devices today to mess with your mind okay so there you have it um if there are any questions you know just let me know especially in regards to the uh you know the calendar that i was you know speaking about earlier all right i'll be making more videos this is my life and i'll be doing this for the rest of it shalom